Crime and antisocial behaviour are an unfortunate part of life, and the old adage, lock them up and throw away the key, does little to help perpetrators, victims, or the government's purse strings. So as the population increases and we all bump along together, how do we tackle a problem that is ever present in our society, try to ease conflicts and reduce reoffending? In 2001, the government funded a five-year research programme that looked into restorative justice, where victims of crime are given the opportunity to take part in face-to-face -face meetings with the offender. Their findings concluded that restorative justice not only motivates offenders to change their behaviour and provides closure for victims and witnesses, but increases public confidence in policing and the criminal justice system. Most people see crime in quite simple terms, that a crime is an offence against the state by an individual. But actually, a crime is two things. It is that, but it's also a conflict between people, and a very serious conflict in many cases. And it is that conflict which you need to get and pull out from the whole system, and to get working on that. And to do that, uh, one needs to bring the victim and the offender and others involved, others harmed, into a very cleverly facilitated meeting, face to face, uh, and to talk through some simple questions about what has happened, who has been harmed and why, and what we're now going to do about it. Restorative justice is about emotions and humanising the conflict which has happened. So the offender sits there and has got to be very accountable for what they've done in a human way. They can't, like in court, just sit there and say nothing and have a barrister to, to, to say it all for them. Here, they're there, they've got to answer the questions, there's nowhere to hide. And that's very impactive. For the victim, they can also ask questions of the offender about why they were picked on, why me? Restorative justice works well in crime, but it also works wherever you have community conflict. The bigger the conflict, the better it works. So it can work very well on, for example, housing estates with antisocial behaviour, neighbours from hell. It can also work terribly well in schools, where one has uh, problems of truancy, bullying, antisocial behaviour in schools. It can handle that very, very well indeed. Restorative Solutions was one of the original campaigners for the adoption of restorative justice in England and Wales, and its work has been pivotal in getting restorative justice widely accepted today. Established in 2004, the not-for-profit organisation delivers practical and effective restorative approaches in all aspects of conflict. It is one of the leading restorative justice training, facilitation and service providers working in the criminal justice system in England and Wales. Restorative Solutions is a community interest company, in essence a, a not-for-profit organisation established by Sir Charles Pollard and Nigel Wiskin uh, with the purpose of informing and influencing uh, senior policy makers, government and other decision takers in the public sector around the benefits and value of restorative justice. We offer a whole range of elite restorative services which includes training, development, project implementation and support, uh, mentoring uh, for offenders uh, and victims and where appropriate directly commissioned restorative interventions on behalf of uh, agencies. On the 25th of May 2001, 18-year-old Chris Donovan was killed when he was attacked by a group of teenagers and left in the middle of a busy road to be run over by a car. Despite his killers laughing at Chris's parents, Ray and Vi, in court, the couple went on to meet two of the three men when they were released from prison after serving 10-year sentences. I believe um, victims very often get left out of the process in court. I believe I had questions that uh, really needed to be answered uh, and we got left in limbo, me and Ray, um, with these questions for years and years and nobody asking us anything and I really wanted also to to make sure that that young man who killed our son would really understand by looking at us what he'd really done 
it's one thing to have justice, but it's another thing to really know that they, they know in their, in their hearts. And you wouldn't know any other way, would you? It makes the offender know that you're not a piece of A4 paper in court, that you're a human being. And it also makes him know to hurt his cause and to pain his cause. Being left with all these questions really made, spurred me on. It was a difficult process sometimes, and sometimes it was really interesting. Well, I, I believe I found out things that I would never have found out during any other process. Talking about it, it was the most incredible feeling. In fact, I felt so, so high coming away from the meeting, I didn't think I could come down to earth again. When that boy walked into the room and walked over to me and put his arms around me and sobbed, sobbed on my shoulder saying he was sorry, he was sorry, he was sorry, nobody can ever do that. It was like Christmas has all come at once because it was true remorse. And I just felt like a bag of, a big sack of potatoes was taken off my back and I felt such relief and lightness. I can't explain it. It was just, we got closure. We got answers to questions and we got closure. And we can all move on. He can move on and we can move on. Peter Wolfe is a reformed criminal who sees things from both sides. Whilst in prison, Peter met two of his victims in a face-to-face -face conference, which proved to be the turning point in his life. He now works with offenders to help them break the perpetual cycle of offending, doing time, being released, then reoffending. I started committing crime about the age of six. The first thing I ever stole was an OXO cube. It was um, purely because I wanted it and I took it. And from then on, I committed every crime you could ever commit other than murder and sex offences, I suppose. And murder was probably more by luck than judgment. But I never really thought about my victims when I was committing crime, except for um, in a wrong way, really. I used to think, was they worth, Was it worth my while stealing from them? Did they have enough money for, you know, how much I could take? It was all selfishness, you know. It was never anything to do with the victim as a human being, never how much I was harming them, how much pain I was causing, how much emotional turmoil I was causing. It just didn't come into the equation for me. I think, personally, my, my own feelings are that we need to be targeting young people in schools to prevent them from entering the criminal justice system. However, there's 86,000 people in prisons at the moment and out of those 86,000 people, there's very few bad people. There's an awful lot of people who have made bad choices. And maybe we need to educate these people and get them thinking restoratively, making them more aware about how they've affected other people, not just their direct victims, but you know, on, in av on average, there's six victims to every one crime. In 2009, there was 10.7 million crimes reported. Six times 10.7 million equates to the entire population of this country. We're all victims in some way, so maybe we need to start getting these people who are causing the harm to start thinking. Disagreements can happen in any area of society and restorative approaches can be implemented to defuse situations that could otherwise escalate into larger incidents. As well as mentoring criminals in prison and young offender institutions, Restorative Solutions also collaborates with organisations, volunteers and frontline workers who are looking for successful, cost-effective ways to reduce conflict, disputes, antisocial behaviour, bullying, crime and reoffending. These include working with community police teams and social housing providers to tackle antisocial behaviour and neighbourhood conflicts. Neighbourhood Restorative Justice is an initiative set up by Restorative Solutions to encourage restorative conferencing and reduce crime through recruitment, training and involvement of community volunteers. Restorative approaches can help neighbourhoods because they can bring people together who live in that local community to discuss the issues that are going on. For example, low-level antisocial behaviour such as parking issues or noise disturbances or um, people playing football on the street. Things that, are, that might seem quite minor but actually when you're living with it, um, it can really get to people. So actually bringing people together to talk about it can look at trying to resolve the conflict and prevent things from escalating in the future.
Restorative approaches has been really successful and the way that we measure success is by actually speaking to people that have been through the process and that's people that have caused harm but then also people that have been harmed and the kind of feedback we get especially from those people that have been harmed is that they start to feel safer in the home but they also start to feel safer in the neighbourhood as well. For those people that have caused the harm quite often they don't realise the impact of what their behaviour is doing so actually sitting down in a safe environment and actually hearing how their behaviour is impacted upon someone else allows them to understand the seriousness and the consequences of what they've done. At Restorative Solutions we believe that the restorative approach works. It helps those who have been wrong to move on and those who have committed an offence to appreciate the impact of their actions and stop offending. Our projects are innovative and groundbreaking. Our people are hugely experienced in designing, developing and implementing restorative approaches in any situation. We're ready to deliver an elite restorative service for you or to help you explore and introduce new ways of working together. For more information, please visit restorativesolutions.org.uk Send an email or phone 01772 842 109. Restorative Solutions. Reducing harm. Resolving conflict.